Train by day, Kyle Wigginton podcast by night, all day. Latranium. 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 Is that how you say it? With a P. Latranium. You don't have to say it with the P. My yeah, the P's like silent, right? My grandmother never said it with the P, bro. That's your that's your family name. That's my that's my first name. So which which what is your can you, do you want to say your full name? So because I, I wondered that. Did you just have one name? Are you like Zendaya? Uh, yes, actually, that's kind of how I go about it. That's yeah. I never thought about doing it like that. That's wild. Well, the that's, only reason the only reason I asked that is because I saw that her and Tom Holland are planning their wedding. Uh huh. And someone said, "Well, is she going to be Zendaya Holland or is he just going to be Tom?" If she's Zendaya Holland, then she's my cousin now because my grandmother's family name is Holland. Oh, okay. Well, she's I thought it was funny they said he was going to like not have a last name uh, if yeah. he took hers. Facts. So he's just Tom now. Just Tom. Yeah. Tom. Tom Dea. Tom Z- Zendaya. Tom yeah. Dea. So so basically, you're just I'm the That's it. Okay. Cool. It. I like it, dude. I think it's it's dope whenever an artist has like a. It's a very unique name. I've yeah. never heard that name until I met you. I'm the only one on earth with it outside of my son. My son has the name now. Well, yeah, absolutely. I had to pass it down. So he's as like, a middle name. He doesn't get it at the first name. Okay, I would say he's got the training him too. Yeah, <laughs> with that, with how that works, you know, the training the second, the training two. <laughs> <laughs> I get the second. Tell you would say it right. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you. Let me tell you a little story to start this off. Okay. So Latranium is a musician, a uh, phenomenal musician as well. Uh, but whenever I first moved um, to where I live now, I was living next to this guy, and I have a clue who he was. And one night I go to, um, to, uh, shit, what's the, what's the beer place you guys performing? Zony Mash. Zony Mash. So I go to Zony Mash and I'm watching a show. I go there to see Dana Ives, one of my buddies. And I was like, who is this? Yeah. Dana Ives, fucking amazing. Shouts out Dana Ives. They come on here too. They're fucking awesome. Yeah, they are. Uh, I, that's, those are my most fun podcasts, uh, whenever they come on because we end up drinking and we just (laughs) have a good time. I need to be here for this. Oh dude. It's, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, so I, I go to the show at Zony Mash and see Dana Ives, and then I, I see the guy that lives next door to me go up on stage, <laughs> and it was cra- it was one of the craziest shows ever. It was it was amazing, dude. I didn't realize you were that good. Come on, come on, it's good, man. You're, you're great, and you you guys together that was a, a, a dynamite combo. Yeah, 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 come on, I think so too, honestly. Yeah. And I remember that show. Like, I don't remember. I guess because not a brag, but I play a lot of shows. So I don't really remember many shows. Mm -hmm. I do remember that one specifically. I had a night that night. That was a good night for me. It was great, dude. I mean, the crowd was, growl was popping. Uh, People were dancing. Do you you have dances to those songs? No, not made up. I mean, I just dance. Okay. I was like, what are these people doing? Cause they were literally doing a dance to your music. And I was like, is this like a a dance that this guy has? Yeah. You know, it's kind of, I feel like that's the good luck spot. Like, all right especially when I'm playing and there's more, I have more of a black audience. Mm-hmm. There's like this family reunion dance. That's what I call it in my head. It's like the electric <laughs> slide. Anytime I'm playing a show and I see that start happening, I know, all right, we've arrived guys. Yeah. It's We're a good here. vibe. We're in the zone. Yeah. So Zony Mash is a, a great venue as well. But I mean, what you say you play a lot of shows like is where are some of your favorite places to, to perform at? Ooh, New Orleans. If I'm, if when we play in New Orleans, Tipitina is probably my favorite place to play. Tips that's, gonna- that's, that's like, that's like up there, man. Tips. Then it's like Siberia, but like adjacent to like Saturn and Siberia kind of on the same level for me. Those are very unique places. Saturn yeah, and Siberia. Saturn, uh, I've been there to see several people perform before and it's, it's a very small place, yeah, it is, but it's, it is. it's like a, the reason I love New Orleans is cause you can see some of the dopest bands in small venues. Right. So and it's it almost like, like you're a personal in a living show. Room. Yeah. It feels like you a living know? room. Yeah. But it's almost like a personal show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. The first time we played a show there, I, I didn't know what to expect. Cause I was like, there's no subs, like there's no stage. Mm-hmm. But then when we played the show, I was like, oh, I kind of like this, man. Everybody's right there. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like it's a show show. It kind of just feels like. We're just singing some songs and having fun. When I'm at Saturn, I try to, I, I like to go upstairs. Yeah. 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 I feel oh, like yeah. I got a personalized show up there. A little balcony. Like Especially I'm king. That corner. I'm king sitting over to everyone, <laughs> listening to my band play for me. Yeah. Facts. It's in my a, living room. It's a fantasy that I have. It's, it's weird. A, it's yeah. a good one. So uh, what got you into, into making music? Like, is this something that you've always done your entire life or is this like a, um, something you kind of fell into? So my earliest memory is being at Chico State Park. It's a like a state park in Ville Platte, like 
close to Ville Platte, Louisiana. It's very, it's out there. It's like in Cajun country, man. Mm. Like it's out there. Is that where you're from? I'm from Mamou, Louisiana, which is like 15 miles away from that. Okay. So it's like not far. But my family used to get together and do like family reunions. And like we would get at the family reunion and they would do, you know, a lot of adult stuff. Kids would go swimming. We'd go fishing, things like that. But one of the highlights of it was always like the uh, the talent show that they did. Oh, your family reunion. They always did a talent show. That's they always dope. did a kid talent show. They were really believed in like, okay, if kids have talent, Let's let's show off our talent to the family. Like yeah. they were really cool about stuff like that. Like my family is really great. But like um they always did the talent show. And I remember like one year I didn't want to do it because I was like young. I was like five or six. And I didn't want to do it because I was nervous. And then the next year I actually did it. I sang P I actually danced to PYT by Michael Jackson. Oh nice. And then sang a song after because my mom was like, You need to sing, you need to sing. And like there's still a picture of me, like stage fright, man. I'm literally fist up, like. I'm singing into the mic, but my fist is like, you, yeah. I'll show you the picture. After yeah. It's like tight because I'm nervous the yeah. whole time. I think as nervous as I was, I think that was the moment for me that I was like, I like this. This is really cool. And then I was watching this special on uh, VH1 or MTV at the time. I don't know what it was. I was young. You had to flip through the channels then. It wasn't like you just can pick anything you wanted to watch. And I watched this series. It was like the Jackson 5 like story, mm -hmm. like how they came to be. I don't know, man, like just watching all of that and then watching Michael Jackson moonwalk across the stage. I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do in life. And oh, yeah. that was like maybe five or six. Like, oh, you were young. Then. I was young. I was young. Yeah. Was so young. then after that, did you just like start doing music all the time or yeah. did it slowly progress? Um, I didn't, you know, because there were like not a lot of resources where I, where I was from. Like, and I mean, no one said, hey, let's put them in piano lessons. Nobody. I don't know why anybody didn't think of that. But, you know, maybe we didn't have it at the time. But. We did have this Casio piano that would play songs for you because my sister took piano lessons at some point. Mm -hmm. So you could press a button, a few numbers here and there, and it would play a song for you. I used to like write songs off of that. Mm -hmm. So like it would play a song and I had, I had no idea. These were all like top hit songs. I'm just thinking, oh, they just put some music in the piano. And I just write my little lyrics about my love life. I'm six, <laughs> bro. Like I have no love life. Love life. I'm looking at people on, on the bus, in the front of the bus. She's so cute. Nah, man, I'm six. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm writing about something. And then yeah. from there, it progressed to like, okay, um, I really like this. Let me pick up guitar. And then by the time I was a teenager, I started playing guitar more. And then I kind of dipped out of music for a while because I got like hella religious and I wanted to like find myself at a young age. That's interesting. So like what, what about religion took you away from music? Um, I was scared I was going to hell. <laughs> for making music so what, what is that? it wasn't it wasn't because of music it that, was just like i just thought i'm going to hell one is that day. catholic or what is that uh, uh baptist at the time baptist. protestant later on in life hmm. but it was one of those things where it's like i'm scared i'm gonna go to hell but here's the here's the crazy part like my mom kind of padded that my mom was like she was like uh uh, uh you meet christians in the 21st century and it's like they don't really live what they be talking about right it'd be it'd be very contrary to what they be preaching yeah my mom was one of those people that she was like no this is what i i believe this and i live this like mm. for real for real so you your mom I mean? thinks that making music will... no 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 she didn't believe she didn't think that she okay. just was like uh, uh like she really believed in like god and christianity and things like that like she really that's her was her lifestyle you right. know what i mean but it wasn't like a superficial thing I got scared because I started hanging out with a bunch of people that were going to youth group and they were like, oh yeah, secular music is of the devil. And then fast forward years later, I'm like, man, I could have learned a lot if I would have just kept listening to Black Eyed Peas. But you know, it that, is what it is. Is that what they call secular music? What secular is, music. What does that mean? Secular I, uh, music. I guess it means outside of the church. Interesting. So it's like Christian music and then there's secular music. Okay. Secular but, sounds like religious. Yeah, man, it sounds know. weird. It yeah. sounds weird. And then, you know, years later, I was like, okay, I'm going to stop listening to music. So I stopped listening to music for like five years, like legit, just stopped. How stopped old playing were you then? Music. I was 15, okay. 14, 15. I think that's when I started listening. Really? Music. Yeah. I gave up. I was just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm never listening to a song that cusses again. And then years later, I just felt the urge, bro. I'm on the other side of the world. And I'm just like, I really do enjoy it. Like, imagine a kid from a small town, poor town, ain't got much happening for him. You make it all the way. I don't have to imagine it. You, But you know, like you're living, I'm living in Romania, Eastern mm -hmm. Europe. You know what I mean? I'm basically living my dream life as a kid. What were I'm you like, doing over there? I was a missionary there. Okay. So like, I'm basically living my dream life and I'm over there and I'm like, this is not what you want to do. Like, okay, if you can eliminate fear, 
which is my mindset, if I can eliminate fear and move across the world and serve a people that I barely even know, surely I can go home and make some songs and like make this a career. Can't be that hard. When those people have their own music too. Yeah, yeah, so, they do. Yeah, were you listening to that kind of stuff? I was, yeah. I was. And it, it, it piqued my interest. Like yeah. it, you know, the different, like I had to learn how to sing in a different language, which is cool, mm -hmm. you know, like, and actually know what I'm t talking about. Like, because I'm communicating to people from a stage, you know, like that was a cool experience. And it kind of gave me a different idea of music. So by the time I came back to America, I was just like, all right, this is what I'm doing. I knew what I was talking about when I was five or six. I just stuck with that. Yeah. You know? Right. Well, I think, I think music can, can like break down cultural, uh, boundaries. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've even, when I've been out of the country and listened to music in other places too, um, you see these people and they don't, they don't have much like mm -hmm. we're spoiled in America. Yeah, Let's put very, it that way. Very much very so. spoiled. So if anyone's ever been out of the country, go out of the country and see, see what your, what life could be like. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be very bad. But anyway, I've been to these places where very third worldish and these people, when they hear music, it brings joy to their eyes. Yeah. They don't have much, but it, like, that's what they have. It's a genuine experience. Yeah. So, know? I mean, I think that can break down the boundaries of, um, of cultures. It's great. Uh, so I think that these religions that, um, you know, think non-secular music is, a, is bad. They're limiting themselves. Facts. Big old facts. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. I, now I will say, I will say in lieu of, of, of growth of just getting older, being an older person now, it was a good decision. You know, I felt like I, I purged my mind. I detoxed my, my mind, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? My, but I was, a 14 year old kid who was r like literally wrapped up in just being an artist. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like as a kid, then it could have, it, it could have uh, threw my ego a whole different way. Like I could have, I could have kept doing it then and been great at it now, but then I would have been like, I don't know. I would have been a jerk. Maybe. Been I, lost. I don't know. Yeah. I would have been lost, you yeah. know, versus like I had to detox my mind. So some part of it actually was really good for me. Like, dude, that's, it's actually so huge that you just said that. And the fact that you had that thought at 14, mm -hmm. that's insane. Uh, cause I, I'm a huge believer of if you're, if you're so ingrained in something, let it go Yeah, for a year or two, whatever it is, five years for you. Uh, for me, I did the same thing. I had to, I had to let something go out of my life. Yeah. And it, it changed my entire outlook because right. I realized that I was, that was my driving force in life. Yeah. Right. And I was missing out on a lot of other stuff. You find that your identity was like wrapped up in oh, it. Oh, yeah. hella wrapped yeah, up thanks. in it, dude. So, I mean, whenever I finally let that go, uh, I could, I could, I started seeing life for what it really is. And I started living in the present moment rather than looking forward to that next uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I concur. Yeah. That's so I think that's a great idea. I think more people should do that. And also mushrooms help me. Facts will change your life. <laughs> will change your life. Nah, so, man, I'm, I'm with you on that though. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm a huge, huge proponent of psychedelics. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that's, that's kind of a no, no word psychedelics because it's a, it's, um, a it word that scary. scares people. It sounds scary. Yeah. It scares oh people. God. But I mean, it's, it's not the stories that you hear about psychedelics for me, none of those actually happened. What it did was just change my perspective on life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, so you, you were talking about, um, Crescent nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have a good relationship with these guys? I think they're great. Yeah. I think they're amazing. They, Joe, uh, Garrity, the founder of Crescent nine. Uh, he's one of the first people that, uh, brought me a THC drink and he's like, here, you got to try this. Yeah. And I tried it and I was like, yeah, we're going to carry it. Like, how do I get this? So we've been carrying it ever since the day he brought it to me. I think probably one of the first ones in the city to carry it. And me up. That's yeah. What I'm talking about. It's good stuff, man. I, I, I'm not a big drinker of alcohol. Yeah. Um, cause it, it makes me feel like shit the next day. Yeah. Trust me. I love it at the time. Oh, but it's great in the moment. In the moment. It's great. But the next day is a drag, a drag, especially as, as you get older. Yeah. Yeah. But the THC stuff, dude, hundred percent. Cause you have a great time then and you don't have a hangover the next day. Yeah. Or I'm not, I'm not crazy high to where I'm like, I can't function. No. You know yeah. It's, I mean? it's like mellow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what really pulled me into them, if I'm being honest with you, was uh, a friend at the time had just quit drinking, but they felt like, you know, the shame of being out, Every all their friends are drinking and they just didn't feel comfortable. Mm. But then they walked up to me and was like, these things are great because I don't get super drunk, but I can still feel social with my friends. And yeah. I was like, wow, that's, you know, seeing it firsthand, coming from like a religious background, like I didn't really believe in none of this. But like now as an adult, seeing like the benefits of it over alcohol, man, I've seen alcohol abuse my entire life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it just hits differently, you know? So it's good to know that there are companies out there trying to give 
great alternatives to people to where they can still feel social enough to go out, still get a light buzz, but not necessarily feel trash the next day. You know? Yeah. It's, I, I don't know how often you go back to where you're from, but I was recently back in Arkansas where I'm from very small town. And it's so crazy when I go back home because I tell people the, the products and things that we had down here, you know, uh-huh. the THC drinks and stuff. And they're like, what? What? Cause I, there you'll still get arrested for like a little bit of weed. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. It, it's like that mamu too. Like, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, he's probably gonna hate me for saying this, but my dad the other day he took I gave him a pack. Well, he took two two cans out of it, and he was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna drink these." Dude, I called him. I was like, "You good, man?" He's like, "Man, those things did nothing to me." Blah blah blah. And he was like, "But I did get good sleep though." And I was like, "Well, look at that, brother. You put the beer down. Go ahead and get you a Chris and that." I mean, it's impressive that he drank two and didn't feel anything. Because when I drink one he of those, did, bro. I was gonna say he did. Because bro, Come when on, I drink man. one of those, I'm like fucking whoa. Everybody wants to be the tough guy though. When you, when you think about it, like, that didn't that didn't bother me. I, I didn't I don't get I don't mm-hmm. get high. Like, whatever, bro. Just enjoy it. You know. Yeah. He definitely did. My brother said he slept for a good little day and a half. So did he drink the ones with caffeine or without caffeine? Uh, without. I'm pretty sure there was a ginger lemonade. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones now. Yeah. I, I like those. Those do it for me. The ones with caffeine make me feel weird. Really? I actually like those. Do you? Yeah, but I like, I, you know, I wouldn't trust me. Bro, I drink so much pre, pre-workout. I love caffeine. Yeah. Yeah, I drink. Whenever I go to the gym, I drink a little pre-workout. Yeah. Which, this is another thing we have in common. Yes. We work out in the we same do. gym. We do. Not together, but we do in the same space. And it's really encouraging. It's, it's very encouraging. see somebody knock it out. Yeah, I... I so I used to work out in a very crowded gym all mm-hmm. the time. So working out what we do now is very different for me. Cause it's more of like a self-motivated workout. Yeah. So whenever I, when I started seeing you guys come in the gym, I was like, yes, like someone yeah. to push me. It's always nice to have someone there with you to, and I think it was a scientific fact too, that whenever you have other males in the same area that you actually release more testosterone really? because you're trying to get uh, wow. better. There's another uh, crazy science fact that I know. Um, so I used to live in a house with um, a couple, mm-hmm. uh, Elmer and Angelique, love those guys to death. Um, but one of the things I, I discovered then when I was researching this is because we were getting, me and him were getting fucking buff. Yeah. Like right. we were just getting jacked and we were, we were just doing normal workouts, but we were going together. But they say that whenever two males live in a house with one female, that that also releases testosterone. Dude, I'm trying to. Because, because the, uh, the two males are, <laughs> are subliminally trying to outdo each other. Really? Even though like they were a couple and I had nothing to do with that. Subliminally, our bodies what? were going. Really? Yeah, like our body were, chemistry just like. It's like, hey, bro, you got to step up today. Dude, these things, you don't, we don't know anything about these things. Yeah, right. Like, right. We, they tell us all the time that we know all this stuff about them. No, we're discovering new things all the time. So, I mean, just the, the, the little things like that, I find awesome. Yeah. Which brings me to another good point. Whenever you started singing, did you always have that voice that you have now, or did you have to train those muscles to sound like that? Definitely had to train it. It, you know, um, your voice is an instrument and like any instrument, you got to learn how to communicate through that instrument. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there are like nuances that I'll hear in other people's voices that I know I can't do with my voice, but I kind of have to find my own way of doing it, you know? So over the years, especially being in church, especially growing up singing in church, you're singing songs that are already written and sang by thousands of other people every Sunday. You know what I mean? So you kind of get in this mindset of, I have to sing the song exactly like, the person who wrote the song. Right. And, you know, it was my mom that actually pulled me aside one time because she heard me practicing. She was like, why don't you sing the song like you would sing it? Something simple. It wasn't like big advice or anything, but it kind of, it, it was a seed planted in my head that sprouted years later when I started doing it professionally. Like, you know, after playing, I don't know, 10 shows in a row, I got to the point where I was like, oh, I always do this little thing on this part of this verse. And then I started learning what people would talk about when they were talking about vocal control, like mm-hmm. learning how to control your voice, learning how to like, just like an instrument, like, like Stevie Ray Vaughan doesn't play like Jimi Hendrix. They're right. playing the same instrument. You know what I mean? They're both playing guitar. Shouldn't they sound the same? It's an electric guitar, right? No. How you move your hands, how you grab your guitar, how you bend your guitar. It all goes into the voicing of what you're playing. So I think my voice was just something over time, over the years, I just got to learn it, know it practice it, shape it and mold it to work it out. 
very interesting analogy you just did there with the the guitar and the human body. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you think about it, every guitar is unique as well. Yeah, it same is. same way as every human body is. Yeah, right. That's freaking awesome. I'm, I'm gonna have to to smoke a little uh, herb and ponder on that one later. <laughs> That's what I love to do when I whenever I hear like this this new like thing that I'm like, this is pretty mind blowing. I like to sit down in, in my room and smoke Dear a little bit. And God. Well, just know the, the, the fact that every human body is unique, every guitar is unique, and the way we play our bodies is very unique to yeah, us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You're right about that, though. You're right. Yeah, because, I mean, if you think about it, you're just the electricity that's inside of this meat suit. I'm the thoughts. Yeah. I'm thoughts, if I'm being honest with you. Like, I am just, maybe now because I, I, I'm at this point in my life going to the gym more, and I'm not concerned about my health, but I do appreciate my body enough to take care of it now mm-hmm. that I realize, okay, like they, these, this is, this thing's weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is a, a weird machine. It's a weird vehicle to yeah, drive, you know? Exactly. I'm just it thinking is. it through. Yeah. You take care of your meat suit. It'll take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't you that called it a meat suit once? I, somebody called it a meat suit once. <laughs> I swear to you, it has never left my mind. So <laughs> like, I literally think about that. Like I'm unzipping my, I'm going to bed at night. If I'm like going to dream or something, mm-hmm. let me get out of this thing right quick. Just put this off to the side. I, 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 I always call it a meat suit. So it probably was me. You heard it from, I don't know. But yeah, I, I've, I've thought about this for a while. It's whenever I started working out hardcore and like that was a time when I was like pushing myself mm-hmm. to see like how far I could take my body fat down and stuff. Yeah. And it's just, it's so crazy that, that this is, has to work to control this. Yeah. So like I have to like overcome cravings, uh-huh. uh, all this stuff. And like, why does this body have cravings? Like, shouldn't I be having the cravings? Like, but no, the body's having cravings and it's telling the mind, go get food. And the mind can say yes or no. Yeah, yeah, shut it down if you want. Yeah, but like no one ever shuts it down. So it's like, is everyone cognizant of that happening or are some people just going with the flow? So I found that out. This is going to be a crazy one. I like crazy ones. Go with me here. Yeah. I fasted for like 40 days. 40 I did, days? Did not eat. So just like water and but like broth juice, or something? Broth at the end. And the only reason why I did broth at the end is because I had a job where I had to like clear fields. Like I was I was doing like a lot of manual labor at the mm-hmm. time. And one day I went to pick up like a log that I just cut. Everything just started turning blue. And I was like, oh my God, I'm yeah. passing out. And I was like, yeah, I should probably... <laughs> put some kind of nutrients, but this was like day 30 that I was feeling yeah. this way, but I fasted for like 40 days and you don't know the amount of temptation that hits you craving wise until you deny yourself something. Yeah. Like that first week, I don't even, I'm, I'm allergic to fish. I can't even eat fish. I saw fish and was just like, I need it right now. Mm. I need it. I need to eat that. I need to eat every, every little thing. Like I, I like if, if Starbucks would accidentally make a drink that had chocolate chips in it that I can chew on, I would just be like, oh, my God. I would freak out at first, and I'd be like, it's not that bad. I'm technically drinking it. But after, like, three weeks of telling myself, no, nah, you can't have sugar. No, nah, you can't have this. Like, try to stay away from sugary drinks. Try to stay true to this not eating thing. Try to stay true to just, like, I'm working on my mind, my body, and my spirit right now. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm telling you, like, three weeks of telling myself no by the time I was it, the fourth week came around by the time the 40th day came around and it was time for me to eat again. I swear to you, if I had, if I, if I could have physically, I would have never ate like, I would never touch food again. Like I, mm. I felt like I was on an, a, in another space in another dimension. Like, I don't even know how to explain it still to this day. The strongest I've ever felt in my life. I was running miles. I was bigger than what I am now. Then. Yeah. Well, maybe not after, but during I was running miles every day. Like uh, your body I was, was trying to go find labor. food, right? Like my brain just like yeah. food was just like a, I was still going out with people. Like they would eat out. Food was irrelevant to me. It was just like oh, that's just it just is source material. I don't need that. In our modern society, it is a very ritual thing yeah. to eat three meals a day. Like you don't need three meals a day. That's why everyone that wa- is walking around is obese yeah, because facts. they're they're basically putting food in their mouth that their body's not burning off. Yeah, like oh, your body's using food as energy. So if you're not burning the energy off, then it makes sense. Yeah, the the longest I've ever done fasting wise is three days, mm-hmm. and I I can't really go over three days. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. If I'm being honest with you, I can't even do it a day now. Well, I can I I do it like once every three or four months. Uh-huh. I'll do a three day fast, and um, what I'll do is I'll do water for the first day, uh-huh. and then I'll do uh, two cups of bone broth uh, for day two and three, and by the by the third day, dude, I'm so ripped. Yeah, because my body's just like it's it's pulling out all the toxins, and it's like because I mean that's that's one of the main things it does is flushes out toxins. Whenever you do that, it gives your body time to uh to um heal itself. Because mm-hmm. if you think about it, 
think about it like it's a computer, right? So the body has a limited uh, processing power, okay? Mm-hmm. Very limited processing power. So if you're constantly digesting food, you're taking some of the processing power away from the body. So if you can shut down the digestive system. It has time to process. It has things. time to like add this processing power to heal the body or even just to make you uh, more cognizant mm-hmm. so that you can, you can think better if you do that. So if you'll, if, if anyone out there fasts, they'll notice that they have mental clarity after and a day or did two. did I? Yeah. Let me tell you, dude. Like I, I can only imagine after 30 that days. That was like, that was even still to this day. Like you, when people talk about like, you got to know your why mm-hmm. I was living it. Like I was like, my why was like, I woke up and was like, I feel my why today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't I still to this day, like I think back, like, man, I would love to do that again, but I can't like, it's like my body's just like, all right, that was a time right. you could do it at that time in your life. And at that time I was very, like, very zealous for things. You know what I mean? So I, I now with, well, now you have kids, a job and kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I need some energy, bro. <laughs> that's another thing about our modern world is we have so much going on, so much coming at us at all, all times that we can't, uh, we can't step back from it yeah, and say, yeah, I'm going to yeah. take three days and fast. Like it's really hard to do that unless you're just made out of fucking money yeah. or you have a very easy, you know, job. But that brings me to our next point, children and arts. Woo. So like, have you noticed um, that your drive in making music has um, increased since you've had children? Yes, almost uh, immediately. Mm-hmm. It, the, when my first child was born, the next day I was like, "All right, let's." It, it, a lot of guys told me this before I would have kids. They were like, "Look, man, it's either going to make you or break you. If you go with it, it'll make you. Mm-hmm. If you don't go with it, it'll break you." I never got that. I, you know, and most people won't get it until they actually have kids. Like it's, it's a real hard concept to grasp. The day my daughter was born, the next day, the next day after my daughter was born, I was writing songs. I, I, I mean, I had writer's block for months writing song. I'm songs, man. Songs. I was playing more. I was producing more. Mm-hmm. I was determined. It was like this new level of determination just like got unlocked in my brain because it really set in for me that I am the caretaker of another human being. You know, like it wasn't the fact of like, I'm a dad, forget all that, forget all roles, forget any kind of like any kind of standard for anything. All I kept thinking in my head was I am responsible for another human. I'm responsible for this. So how this the outcome of this person is based on the foundation that I give them. I got to step up. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to make sure that she's not hungry. She's got food. She's got all her basic needs enough to flourish, you know? So, but by, by the time kid number two came around though, it was like, all right, man, I feel like I'm getting jumped here. <laughs> you know, like you were invited to the party, bro, but like y- y'all need to slow down, you know? Yeah. And, and it's still a motivator if I'm being honest with you. Like I have a reason now, like going to the gym. That's why I started going to the gym. Mm-hmm. That, I think, I think actually when I first started going to the gym, I walked into the gym one time with you and I was so nervous to be there. Cause I was just like, I don't want to, like, I didn't want to be there. You know right. what I mean? It's like, I didn't ask for this. And I remember you saying, like, dude, you can work out here. Like, it, you, you, you're fine. Like, I, I just need this one space. And I thought to myself, I said, I want to be there one day. Now, boy, if somebody in the gym, you're just going to have to be here, man. I got to get this work in. Yeah. Because for me, it was like, you know, my dad's 50, if, uh, like, going into his late 50s. He's still, you know, he's still fit, you know, but he also was a basketball player. So he's like, he's still fit. But, you know, I know I have several friends who have parents that are going into their 50s, 60s, almost 70s, and they can't play with their grandkids, man. Like they can't really get on the ground. They can't they can't really do the things that like kids require. Yeah. Kids need play. They need to be able to you need to be able to get on the ground with them. You don't have to necessarily fight them, but you got to be able to roll around. You know, I'm not asking anybody to get on a trampoline or something to hurt your knees. I'm just saying if you got the ground, if you're at a beach, you want to be able to get in the water with them. You know, you want to be able to protect them. I have this weird apocalyptic view, a point of life sometimes where I'm like, when I'm running, if I'm at the park and I'm like, I'm not doing these miles fast enough. If something goes down, I need to be able to run three miles to get to my house. Cause I live three miles away from my house. I need to be able to run there nonstop. <laughs> and I always tell them, and I don't know why it's just like a thing in my head. I'm like, I'm just not there yet, man. Yeah. But like, it's those kind of thoughts that I'm like, man, I want to be able to protect my kids. Like, and not just about protection. I want to be able to live long enough to play with, like see my kids enjoy life. I want to be able to wrestle my grandkids. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to show them grandpa still got it, you know? Yeah. But yeah. One of the, one of the key factors in that too is muscle mass. Yeah. Like they show that, uh, 
that elderly people, the more muscle they have, the the better mobility they have, and as well as the the long, longevity of life they have. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, the more you work out, the better your muscles are going to get. The mm-hmm. longer you're going to live, the more yeah, mobility you can have. Yeah. It was like a uh, uh, um, a flip of the switch moment. Um, COVID was happening. We were neighbors at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm living next to you, and I remember waking up at pff, 11 a.m. and I was just thinking to myself, dude, I got a three month old. I'm waking up at 11 a.m. I'm 28 at the time, bro. You got to do something. You got you got you, you're wasting a lot of time, and, mm-hmm. and and especially that COVID time, like when we were on lockdown, gave me a lot of time to think. I went up to the roof a lot. I saw the sun sunrise a lot. I started craving the sunrise. And then once I was up at, at five and six in the morning, I was just like, you might as well go to the gym. You might as well start. And it took about a good year and a half for me to get comfortable. Two years for me to get good at being there. And now I'm at the point now where I'm, it's autopilot now. Dude. Yeah. I roll out of bed and I just go straight there. Yeah, I walk in there and see, see you sweating. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice, man. It's good to see other people working hard because yeah. it, it fuels me to do the same thing. Yeah, 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 same, same, same. There's some key people that be in there sometimes that I'm just like, I needed that. Like, mm-hmm. this is one guy, I don't know if you know him, but he's he he's like, he stopped me one time in the middle of a workout and he was just like, I learned this workout on TikTok. And it just goes back to I don't even know what the workout is. Who, which which guy was it? Was the big guy or the yeah? Younger? He's a big okay. he's a yeah. big guy. Dude, I fucking love that guy. Dude, he didn't even tell me what the workout was. He yeah. just looked at. He said, I learned this on TikTok, and that was it. I was like, all right. I don't even know his name, but Dude, like, he it's puts just, in the work, bro. It's just fun to see all these guys in the gym. Um, yeah, we have that bond there. Yeah, yeah. but now he he works hard too. There's a lot of a lot of hard workers in that gym there. I um, yeah, I I do miss going to a bigger gym though. I think one day I might have to get another another um subscription down here start going What's with it like gyms. at a bigger gym there? man it's i only know the solitary like solitude of the sm- uh, uh, like my own small gym yeah well it's it's almost like we were talking about like like letting things go for a while mm-hmm. like being at a big gym is so addicting uh because you're seeing not only the women walking around in their their little tight uh, spandex, so that's like fueling you to work harder. But you're seeing these other dudes that are like bigger than you, and that's fueling you to work harder. So it's just like you have external things that are pushing you to get better. Uh, I see. Whereas when we're working out in the gym that we work out in, it's more of a meditative experience yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's self. You're pushing yourself. And I'm more than sure you could probably like at a bigger gym, you probably can like. If you really want to know how to work something out, you probably can go to somebody in there and be like, "Hey, how do you?" How do yeah, you, yeah. You people, doing? people help you, dude. The gym culture is amazing. I, this new TikTok thing where people are filming themselves and like getting mad at people that are walking around the gym—that's not gym culture. So if anyone out there wants to start working out in a gym, uh, there, there, find someone who's buff, and they're normally the nicest person you'll ever meet in your life. Probably will guide you every step yeah. of the way. They may look intimidating, but I promise you, really muscular people are some of the nicest people in the world. <laughs> Like I, I've, I've worked out in many gyms across the U S and I've never found a gym that had rude people in it. Um, I can't stand this new TikTok shit though, where, where people are filming and getting mad. That oh yeah. yeah. I have seen a few of those. Yeah. It just, it blows my mind. That's not real gym culture. So don't let that uh, dissuade you from going to a gym, but yeah, go to the gym, go to the gym get, get your workout in, man. Get, get healthy. I think it's a, it's something you, you have to. You really have to take into your own hands these days as your health. I feel like YOLO culture messed that up, though. Like, YOLO was like, you only live once. Well, yeah. Balls like, to the wall. Live as hard as you can. Yeah, it's but like, like, what is that? Is that doesn't mean eat a whole bag of cookies. No, nah, I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. 1,000%. Like, you only live once, but why not Why not live the fullest life why not, you can? Why not prolong it? You yeah, know? Prolong <laughs> it and live the fullest life you can. If When you get to be 300 pounds, you're not moving around. Your mobility lacks. Yeah. So you're not living a full life anymore. If you're, you know, young and fit or not even young, if you're just fit, I see older people that are fit and they're, they still have great mobility. Mm-hmm. They're not fearing breaking a, a hip when they fall or anything yeah. like that. They get around great. So, I mean, I think that's just, uh, it's a key to living a very healthy life. Running has been my new muse. So. Dude, I, that's something that I struggle with. I, I'll be honest with you. I never, if you would have told Trey five years ago, hey bro, you're going to be a runner. I would have looked at you and be like, you're crazy, bro. <laughs> like, but do you run outside or do yeah. you run in the gym? Both, both. Okay. See, I can't run in the gym. I can run outside it's weird. better. The treadmill is very, it's it's like, it It feels uncomfortable. It's like, I feel like I'm moving, but it, nothing around me is moving. Like, I'm very confused. It's just, it's like stagnant. Uh-huh. Yeah, but outside there's like stuff to see and it actually feels nice right now. So, I mean, nice. It now would be good, some some good running weather. But Yeah, that's um, something I, I take my kids to do. Like, like I, I have this image uh, uh, at Ottoman. Okay. So I have like this image of my family, like when, I, when my daughter is going to be like six or seven, mm-hmm. 
and my son's going to be like four, we're going to be, I'm going to be pushing him in a wagon and she's going to be running with me. And my wife's going to be like ahead of us or something. Like, I don't know in my head. I saw, I saw this family at the park one time and I was like, that's us. Mm -hmm. That's us. I'm just believing that kind of stuff, bro. Like I want my kids to be like, I wasn't taught to be active like that. Like same here. My, they like, I was a bigger kid too. Like I'm still like, I was always bigger than probably everybody in my class. You know what I mean? Like it's always been like that for me and people's, um, their criticism wasn't really helpful because it wasn't constructive. It was just like, man, you should really watch what you eat. Right. Hey man, you don't think you should not have five hot and spices. Hey bro, this your fourth pack of noodles. It was like, just say what you need to say. Hey bro, you should go to, my dad was actually the one. He's like, you need to go to the gym. Yeah. I'll pay for the membership. Never went. Cause I was afraid. Cause like you said, gym culture can be very like it's intimidating. It's intimidating. It's intimidating at first. And then recently, once I started doing it and getting involved, like now when I travel, I find different gyms to go to, trainers to work with. Like when, like my family runs, bro. Like we wake up at six in the morning, wife, kids go to the park and we run miles together. Mm -hmm. Like I w I'm hoping that in the subconscious and the foundation of my kids, by the time that they're like eight and nine, they won't see it as like a vanity thing. Like, oh, my dad used to run they'll see it as like, oh, I get it now. You know what I mean? Because my wife didn't get it at first either. She was just like, this is tiring. Like, I'm already, she's breastfeeding, you know, so her body's already worn out. It's already being depleted of everything she's putting in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think it was probably after our third week of running that she stopped. She, she goes, I get it now. Like, I love, like, her heart rate is up. She's thinking through ideas and she's also my manager too. So like that run for us is not just a run. It's like, we need to talk about work, you know, like we need to figure this stuff out. Cause it's like everything we do is more of a strategic play. Cause we're our artist manager duo. That's awesome. I love you that. Know? So that ru running has been very stimulating to our brains because it kind of shows us like, all right, I'm 10 minutes into this three mile run and this I'm using this couch to 5k app. That's telling me I need to run right now. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't think I can do it. And you're like, let me just go for two more minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can do it. Let me just go for 30 more seconds. I don't think I can do it. Try 10 more seconds. And then before you know it, you zone out 30 minutes goes by and it's like, Whoa. Yeah, dude, you gotta what? wait. You gotta wait for those, um, those chemicals, those, yeah. those, those chemicals to hit your brain. And then you're like, this is awesome. Yeah. I love this. It's so the human body is so fucking weird, man. Like if you, if you think about it, why, why would you, okay, we can break it down. Like why would, why would running feel good to you? Why would working out feel good to you? Well, it feels good to you because that, that used to be how we got food. Yeah. Right. Right. You run down animals, you kill them and you have to exert uh, um, effort to get some reward from it. That mm -hmm. food where nowadays all we have to do is walk next door to McDonald's and pick yep. up those five McChickens and go across the street or, or that dad dog. dog yeah. Maybe. Get, get you like five or six hot dogs. Get you a duck dog. Uh, duck dog, son. <laughs> yeah, the human body's weird, man. I think uh, as the years go on, we're going to learn more and more about it. It's going to really tune us in to, to how it works, which could be a dangerous thing. Yeah. 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 I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I'm curious, to be honest with you. I'm curious. Uh, I've been... I, I don't know why I do this on Twitter, but it's not even Twitter anymore. It's X, but you know, I, well, it's Twitter to us. Yeah. I don't even know Elon Musk, dude. I don't pay attention to him. I actually could care less about, I don't know, but Neuralink is so weird to me. I'm just like, what you want to link yourself to like, you want to just want to upload. You ever watch that show upload? I haven't watched that. Man, no. dude, shows like that dystopian futures like that yeah. with technology freak me out because I'm like, we are a lot closer. We're a lot closer to it than you think. Like right now, three body problem. You ever watch that one? Yeah. Three body problem in my head. I'm like, we're not far from this. No. Like they're they're kind of hitting. I'm, but I'm like, I'm, I like quantum physics. I you mean, know? what if what if it's already happening? What if? Like, what if, what if there are people on this planet that were replaced? Cause you, like you said, you're the thoughts in the head, right? Yeah, yeah. So what if, what if you could just replace those thoughts with some other thoughts and then you have a different person in a body? In you a ever see suit? somebody that you're just like, you're not from here. I have. I've, I, I'm, I, there's a few people along in my life. I have this thing with people. It's like, and I, I um, I, like my close friends know it. It's like eyes, certain pairs of eyes. I swear to you, I feel like I've seen that person, but not that person in multiple places and dreams. Mm -hmm. Like I can look at somebody's eyes and be like, wow, I know you. I don't know how I know you. I don't know where you got them same eyes from. This some real meta stuff, but I don't know. No, I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. I got to, I have a big imagination. So what do you do when you meet these people? Uh, I listen. 
I listen like that. that I don't to put it plainly. Like I don't do. I don't make it. I don't make it like. Um, not to make it a biblical thing, but there is like scripture that says, "Be careful because you're inter- You can be entertaining angels unaware." And I'm not saying you or know demons. I necessarily are demons. Demons are angels. You know they're fallen angels, so they're still angels. You know what I mean? You don't know what you're entertaining. <laughs> Whatever is out there is out there. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm hell. I'm still figuring out what I believe, but I do understand that sometimes you're gonna meet people that are gonna blow your mind. The best thing you could do is listen. Yeah, that's a good. That's that's a great. Shut up and listen. That's a great way to to look at that. When you meet these people that are strange, listen to them. Just listen. You ain't gotta do what they say, but just. Take it to account. This is a weird moment. Some energy is like happening here. Just be in the moment. Have you, have you, can you tell us an experience that happened to you? Um, I'm trying to think. Let's see if I can find one. You know, I'm nervous. So that's not, it's no big deal. I, I've had a lot of these experiences in life. So um, I'm very familiar with them. I have one, but I can't talk about it on camera. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Only because they, you know, it's, a, I'll tell you later. It's I, a I pretty, feel the crazy, same way about some of these situation. things. <laughs> no, I feel the same way about some of these things. Like whenever you asked me this in the beginning, I was like, yeah, should I start talking about this or not? Cause, <laughs> Cause like, I, I know these people that I'm talking about, they listen to this. Like they, they follow yeah, me facts, on, they follow facts, me on like, social media and stuff. Bring this one up. Yeah. They follow me on social medias and things. So, um, I think you're fine though, if you just don't call out names, but I feel like if you start shedding light on these people, that more people will be, will be able to see them for this. I think the only, the only reason that I'm, that I've noticed these people is because I'm so aware of everything. Uh-huh. So I'm even aware when I'm sitting in a room with someone, I'm like, this is fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. Like for where sure. a lot of people overlook certain things. I had a, I had one old man. This is probably one of the the most recent ones when I moved to New Orleans. I don't know this man, but you just know when you meet a person that you're just like, I don't know what you have to tell me, but you got to tell me something. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but you you know you'll know the feeling when you know it. You you'll know it when you meet people. You got to tell me something. And this whole I was I was live driving at the time, and. I, I don't know why I felt compelled to tell this man my life story. That's not me. You know what I mean? I'm chill. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'm a talker. I'm a charismatic person. But I'm not about to... I, I'm live driving, dude. I'm working. The last thing I want to do is talk about how I grew up this and this and this and this. This is an old rich white man. He is not concerned about my life at all. Like, whatsoever, bro. Like, I was wrong. I was actually very wrong. I'm, I'm driving and we get to his destination and I drop him off. And before he gets out of the car, I felt it. I felt like he was going to do something weird. Like, I just like, man, this dude's about to like, I don't know. I feel like he's going to either attack me, but wrong again, wrong. again. It's like your body knows, like your body, your mind, your receptors. It knows when to pick up on moments like that. That's why I say to listen, because like in my mind, I'm thinking this guy's about to attack me. Nah, dude, he gave me the best advice. Any, I still keep it. I keep it close to my heart. He, um, he opens the car door and he goes, young man, I just want to tell you. One day, you're going to have to follow your own North Star. You might as well start now. He didn't say anything the whole car ride. He didn't talk to me the whole car ride. He listened. He goes, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. One day, you're going to have to follow your own, uh, your, own North, your own North Star. Learn how to do it now. Closes the door, walks off. Never heard of the man. Never seen the man. Never, never again. But that little piece of advice is literally the reason why I'm sitting in this chair. Yeah, dude. Those nuggets. Changed my whole life. Like, boop, in a moment. And those people do that too. They just walk into your life, say that, drop that nugget on you, and then walk out. Move out. It's it's fun. it's cool that you um that you took that away from that actual car ride though. Like I've had similar experiences with people where they've said things to me, and I've just kind of like walked off, like whatever. Yeah. And then things have happened in the future, and I'm like, fuck, that guy wow. said this to me. Yeah, he was right. Yeah, so it like came back full circle. But yeah, it's uh it's interesting when when those entities come into your life, and I think I don't think that. You know, we're saying that these people come into your life. I think that all this is is almost pre-scripted out. Yeah, facts. facts. Like, I think that the reason you and I were living next to each other mm-hmm. was because we were doing something. We're on a, we're on the same vibe. Yeah. So yeah. something brought us together, and it was like these people are going places. Like, let's see if we can like merge them together and see what happens. When we bounce them off yeah. each other. I, I when I first got here and like. All right, we're talking the training up that has uh, moved here and came from being working in churches for the past. 10 years of my life. You know what I mean? Like my whole view of the world is differently than most people around me off bat, which mm-hmm. is cool. Like, I don't mind it because I like what I believe. I know what I believe. I know, I, I know that it doesn't infringe upon anybody else's belief. Like you believe what you want. In fact, we could trade information. I might learn something from you. You know what I mean? 
But there, there are moments for me where like today that not being in those situations and not being like working for the church or doing this, that I'll, I'll have these mystical, I'm talking mystical moments, bro. Where I'm just like, how did that happen? I ain't saying that there's somebody above. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I don't know. I don't know anything. I haven't been anywhere. I haven't died. I'm here. You know what I mean? I'm only alive once, but I am not stupid. And I do think that when I got here, a lot of people would talk about like vibrations and frequencies. And I always thought that was like mysticism, mystical talk, but you really start seeing it in life. Like when people are moving matter, we're matter. We cannot be created nor destroyed with energy. You know what I mean? Like, um, there are people you meet that I feel like vibrate on a frequency and a level and move on a level that you do. And you tend to like come together. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? You tend to find your frequency range for lack of better words. You know, I, I 1000% believe that there are people in my life that I should not, I should not know. Like I should not know. Like, but I had to go on the other side of the world to meet them and still close to them still to this day. Like I would call them before I would call like, a sibling maybe you know i don't know my siblings are cool i love them i would i'm gonna call y'all first you know yeah i feel the same way i have have friends from other from out of the country too that i'm like i speak to them every day yeah and if if, i say speak to them i send memes back and forth to them right i mean that's that's a form of communication that's a form of communication communication. new age communication baby shout out to edward pena boy uh, (laughs) thank you for that last one you sent me (laughs) we send funny videos literally all night every day dude yeah i I do it all all around the world it's crazy how, how you can connect to the people but Latranium, what's next on the docket for you? What is next for me? So I'm finishing this festival season, playing a stacked show this week, stacked show lineup this week. So like I'm playing like Wednesday at the Square. Um, I'm doing something with Tulane for uh, their students uh, and then playing at a speakeasy, which is really cool. Like it's under the, I'm pretty sure under the Orpheum. Oh yeah, dude, the ice, the ice double um, speaker with it. I don't, I don't, I don't, what, do they have a name for it now? I have no idea. They bro. I'm trying to figure it out in my head. I'm here. I'm seeing the Instagram handle in my head, but I don't know the name of it. They used to call it the ice something. I don't know, but yeah. they, we're doing that. Um, that's that's all, is that invite only, or can anyone? No, get no, no, anybody can. Anybody can come to that. Like dude, that's every, a dope. The only dope thing that's spot. invite only is the two lane thing. But outside of that, man, we try to we try to do with Latrania because. A lot of what we do is marketing, to be completely honest with you. Like the music side of things is like, that's my muse. But realistically, what me and my wife do and what me and my team do is we market. You would try to figure out ways to get people there. So we do majority free shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, If people haven't noticed that every now and then we'll do something that's like at a bar that you got to pay $10. And even then we'll still let people in free. Why? Because we have this thing called the guest list. Everybody wants to be on the guest list, man. Everybody wants to feel important. Everybody wants to feel like, oh, yeah, it's my friend's show. I'm just going and you can just walk in. But we actually do that. Mm-hmm. First 10 people that DM me always get in free. Nope. It doesn't matter who it is. Bro, if you want to bring a friend, I can try to see if we can squeeze in another spot. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I just want people to know, like, you all have a safe space to come to where you can have fun. If you ain't got no money, I know what it's like to be poor. Just come. Just show up. If you want to be there, just show up. You know what I mean? Um, That's on the immediate horizon. But the next wave of what I'm I'm actually trying to do right now is we're going to be making another EP. We're working on that all summer, um, trying to change up how I write things. A lot of my artistry has been writing love songs, like things that make you feel and look at love differently from the perspective of my own like take on it. But lately, I guess with having kids, my brain has just been shifting. I'm trying to write songs that people listen to maybe 20, 30, 100 years from now. And they're just like, wow, I needed that. That was a message. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. I feel like music and and maybe this is just me getting on my high horse, but I feel like music is so microwave these days. Like, it, you know, it's a hot pocket. It's not a gourmet pocket pastry filled with mozzarella cheese, homegrown, you know, I, I raised this hog, killed it, you know, made salami out of it. You know what I mean? Like everything is just so let me process this in a, a factory and give it to you. AI is about to make that. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. And I think that's a scary thing because me as an artist, I like doing what I do because I like expressing myself. So instead of actually going with the curb, I'm just going to do me. I'm going think- to write songs that make me feel great and that my kids can listen to. 100 or uh, 20 years from now and feel like, wow, I needed that. Well, I think as, as a, a listener of music, an avid listener of music too, I, all day long, but I think that the the people can tell when it's AI and when it's actually produced by yeah. a human being. Like it's, there's something in there that it lacks still, feel. Yeah. There's no soul to it. 
And so, you know it. Yeah, keep doing you, man. I think I think what you're doing is amazing. Um, so yeah, keep stay on that train. Uh, I even think uh, the Get stuff it. you're you're uh, you stay on the train, baby. <laughs> uh, so where can the people find you at, baby? Uh, Spotify. That's the first place you should go because you want to listen to me before you go to the Instagram party. Because when you get to the Instagram, the party's set up. And we just waiting on you. You know what I mean? You can find me on everything. Latraniup. L-E-T-R-A-I-N-I-U-M-P. If you Google it, literally everything will come up. You'll probably find out what high school I went to, too. So, Bro, you're going to make that a song, too? I should. Yeah, when you spelled I it should. out there, I was fucking vibing said, with it, dude. I'm going to spell it out in the background. Mm. Get on the train. Mm. Get on the train. 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 Thank you for coming in today, brother. Of course, man. Yeah, so look forward to seeing where you go. You're going to be huge. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm.